Is the US economy gonna get its mojo back? Welcome to WSJ Live, I'm Simon Constable. To help us answer that question, we got Laura Tyson, she's a professor of economics and business at UC Berkeley. It's also a lot of other things. Thank you very much for, for, for being here. Now, you, you were the, uh, a chair of the President's Council on Economic Advisors under- President Clinton. Clinton. President Clinton. Mm -hmm. um, different economic scenario now, you're not advising the government. Yes. Are we going to get our mojo back? <laughs> and if not, what can we do? One of the things we did in that job, and they still do it in that job, yeah. is to make sort of predictions about the future, yeah. forecast the future. It's very hard um, right here. It's very hard. Look, I th I've written that I think the it's more likely this year that we really do see an acceleration of growth. We've been hoping for one for several years. Yeah. The reason it's more likely this year is that the headwinds have dissipated. So households really have improved their balance sheets mm -hmm. and deleveraged. And we have had a real uh, improvement in the residential housing market. It's not it's not totally back, but it's better. And state and local governments, my state of California, went from bankruptcy to a surplus. We can spend money on goods and services. Okay, that, that is all great, <laughs> but where are the jobs? Because there are millions well, of people out there that want jobs. First of all, you have I have written many times that the main reason that job growth has been so slow is that the recovery pace has been so okay. slow. You grow at 2%, you are not going to see you know, 200,000 jobs a month, which we've gotten only a few months is not inconsistent with that very slow mm. pace of growth. Actually, the growth, job growth has been fairly consistent with the growth of the economy. The gro if the growth of the economy picks up by a percentage point, and that's what some forecasters mm. say, say it picks up by a half a percentage point, you're just going to get stronger momentum in job growth. And then furthermore, state and local governments, they were laying off people, and now they can start to bring some of those people back. If you were advising the Obama administration, mm -hmm. uh, the President Obama, in the same job he had with Bill Clinton, what, what would you say that he should do different than he's doing now? Well, I think it's important to recognize that there's really very little that the president can do given the Congress and given the impasse. So the good news is, the good news is we actually improved the fiscal outlook for this year by getting rid of the fiscal drag that existed. Mm. The budget deal at the end of 2013 means that fiscal policy is not taking so much out of the economy mm. in 2014 as would have been the case. So that's another reason to be optimistic. The Fed's going to stay accommodative, I yeah. believe. Fiscal policy is going to be less contractionary because of the budget deal. And then you have all these other good things going on because the headwinds dissipated. You put that all together, you say growth in the 3% range, that means a stronger pace of job creation. Stronger pace of job creation. When do we get back to a, a situation that you know where, where, where people who try hard and are qualified can get a job? Because right now we've got people who are trying hard and they are qualified, right. but there aren't the jobs so, there. So, so we have two things going on. One thing that's really important is the long-term unemployment rate. And yeah. that is, uh, you do have a number of people there, and this is a real problem, and that's why I think the extension of the unemployment benefits was so important, mm -hmm. the long-term benefits. So that's a problem, and it's not going to go away quickly because we have a large pool of unemployed workers yeah. who have been, been unemployed for a long time. Some of those who lost their job, say, in their mid-50s, mm -hmm. those are very hard, those people are finding it very hard to find jobs because essentially they were laid off. Some of the skills they have are no longer relevant. Those skills are not mm. going to be required in the future. The, the longer you are unemployed, the more disadvantaged you are in terms of people calling you back. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's going to be a problem. On the, another, Is it going to be like, I mean, can you put like a time so, frame so like five years? Uh, all right, so my, my, my best estimate of this is really the ongoing work of the Hamilton mm. project. So what the Hamilton project has looked at is what's called the jobs gap. And they say, how long would it take for the U.S. economy to generate the number of jobs to get us back to, we're still about a million short, of peak employment in 2007 and absorb the oh, increments to the labor force. So how long is that? If at a pace of job growth we, we might get this year, it's still not until 2018. Okay, 2018. We'll leave it on that note. Always a pleasure. Laura Tyson, who's a big cheese in lots of areas. Too many to mention. <laughs> Laura Tyson, I'm Simon Constable, and this is WSJ Live.